Uh, my girlfriend doesn't appreciate me. Oh, my girlfriend doesn't appreciate me. Poo-hoo. Um, hey, Billy Backfat. <laughs> I like that one. Um, I'm a 21 year old guy currently unemployed. Well, why the fuck? Yeah, you're, you're a guy without a job. It's like being a woman without tits. I mean, what the fuck? Or a, a vagina. Yes, women. That's what we look at you like. I'm sorry. We are. We're fucking animals. Blame God. That's how we're wired. I'm a 21-year-old guy currently unemployed, and I live with my girlfriend. And we've been together for a year, and I'm... And I'm... Oh, a year and seven months now. Uh, recently, it seems like she doesn't appreciate me anymore. Yesterday, when she was at work, I made her coffee, did the laundry for her, bought her some pizza, and then picked her up. And all I heard that night was how... I didn't rinse the dishes enough before putting them in the dishwasher. She doesn't act like this. Uh, she doesn't act this way to anyone else, and I feel like I can't do anything right around her. Would love to hear your feedback and go fuck yourself. Yeah, here's the, do- here's the deal. All right? And you'll never get a woman to admit this. All right? But one of the great things about them having a boyfriend is that he's going to pay for shit. He's going to take them out. He's going to buy her, buy her stuff, right? He's going to fucking, you know, your job as a man is to provide, okay? A woman, you know, after you, you, you push her off the dock with your Johnson there, she can make a fucking baby, all right? And then immediately just be the greatest fucking mom and it's fucking magical to watch. What can we do? We pick up heavy shit that they can't pick up, and we go out and we earn a living. Now, here's the thing. As a man, the second you're sitting there and you don't have a fucking job, and she does, and now she gets to feel what it's like to be a man, which is you fucking come home, right? You've busted your ass all day. You know, if you're fucking young, you don't have your dream job yet unless you're Justin Bieber or somebody like that or you made it in professional sports. Generally speaking, your 20s is the struggle of the dream, hoping it comes true at some point in your fucking 30s. So she's coming home and she's seeing you sitting there like a little fucking homemaker. And, you know, every guy sometimes, you know, when you come home and you look at, you know, if your wife stays at home or your girlfriend stays at home, and you're just looking at it, especially if you don't have any kids. It's like, what the fuck did you do all day? It's like every day's Saturday <laughs> for you. What the fuck? You know? But at the end of the day, you're like, hey, no, but look at you. She's, you know, she's, she's fucking beautiful. She's banging me. You know, all that shit that guys think are important. But for women, you got to provide, dude. You got to get a fucking job. You want, you want your girlfriend to fucking respect you again? You got to get a fucking job. You got to start bringing home money. That's it. That's it. See, what I do is I actually I bring home money and I do the fucking dishes, you know? So then whenever my wife gives me shit, I can be like, what? What is the problem? Okay, I'm like fucking Babe Ruth here. I'm hitting home runs and I'm pitching a no-hitter. What the fuck else do you want? Wh- what is the problem? See that? You know why I can say that? Because I have a fucking job. You don't have a job, sir. So no matter what the fuck you do, her problem with you is not that you didn't rinse the shit off. It's not that you did this wrong or you were driving too fucking fast. It's the fact that when you guys go out to get a meatball sub, she has to pay for it. You know? Yeah. You, you want to see the, all their feminism go right out the fucking window? You stay home. You be Mr. Mom. That's what happened here, sir. What happened here, sir, is you stop being a man to her. The second you don't have a job when you're with the woman, you immediately become like this fucking... 20, 25, 30, 35, 40 year old fucking teenager. You, they look at you like you're a child. Um, that's it. So you need to get a fucking job. Am I, am I, ladies, I, am I wrong? I'm speaking for you here, okay? If you think I'm fucking wrong, just write into the podcast and I'll read your opinions and I'll make fun of myself. All right? Okay. Younger girlfriend not ready for marriage. Okay. Hi, Bill. I'm a big fan of yours and would like your advice. I'm a 35-year-old guy from the Bronx dating a 20-year-old Japanese girl in Japan. I love her a lot and want to marry her, but she tells me she's not ready for marriage and children yet and can't really say if or when she'll be ready. 
Yeah, it's because she's 20. He goes, I love her, but getting married and having children is very important to me. If I were younger, I would say, okay, no problem, and just keep dating and see if anything changes. But at 35, I'm starting to feel pressure to get married sooner rather than later. Not societal pressure, but I worry that I'm getting too old to be a father. Well, I just had one at 48, so. Um, Alec Baldwin's fucking knocking him out in his 50s. He said, I'm okay right now. But in five or ten years, I feel I might not have enough energy to run around chasing little ones. And if she's still not ready in a few years, that would put me in a very difficult position. And you're thinking smart, sir. I'm happier than I've ever been with her, and happiness can be so fleeting that I don't want to ruin it with what I have with her. But at the same time, I can't wait forever. What would I do? Um, I would I would listen to... Uh, I would listen to logic. All right. I, I, I really think, you know, most of the time, you know, if who's dragging their feet to the altar, it's usually the guy. OK, not the woman. Why would they? For the most part, generally speaking, they're marrying somebody that makes more money than them. So there's no fear financially. If you fucking, you know, they're not going to lose half the house. They're going to get the whole house and they're going to get a fucking check from you. That's basically what the fuck happens. You know, it's like the showcase showdown at the end of the price is right. And you're the guy that they go, hey, thanks for playing. And you just walk off and then everybody crowds around the person that won. That's usually the woman in marriage. OK, and I don't hear any shit from women because all you guys do is bitch that you don't make as much money as men. So what I'm saying, because if you're just going to say that's not the fucking case, then what are you bitching about fucking equal pay for? All right. Either you're making less or you're not. All right. So. For you to sit there being saying, I, I love you, I want to spend my life with you and fucking have children with you and start a family and live happily ever after. For her to say, uh, I'm not ready for that yet and I can't really say if or when I will be ready. Yeah, dude. She's 20 years old. She has no idea who the fuck she is. You're, you're, you're fucking th 15 years down the road. You know who you are. You know what you want. And uh, I don't think she's going to figure that out with you. You know, you're taking their best years away from her where she should be out fucking seeing, figuring out what the fuck she wants. And you in your best years of because now you're ready. So you need to go out and meet a fucking mature woman who's not mature. I'm not saying this woman's immature. She's not immature. she's fucking 20. All right. This is what happens. This is what happens when you when when there's that level of an age difference at this age. OK, look. If you were 45 and she was 35, she'd be fucking, you know, pressuring you. Um, I don't know, dude. I would just hate for her to, at 23 to be like, you know what? I don't, this isn't like what I want. And now you're 38, you're pushing 40. You don't want that. I, I think I would uh, pull the ripcord now. You know, that's what I would do. I don't fucking know. I mean, it's hard for me to tell you to fucking break up with somebody over paragraph of information on a podcast as I sit in a bed in a hotel room, isn't it? So take all of that with a grain of salt, all right? You know what I would do, sir? I would ask your good friends. Ask your good friends what the fuck they think, because they know you. And they'll actually have to have a nice long fucking distance phone call with you. I guess you're in Japan right now. I would do that, you know? Or maybe you got some friends in Japan. I don't fucking know. That's a big decision, but just from that little information, yeah, I'd get out of it. You know, and I'm also saying don't do that because I don't fucking know you. All right. Jesus Christ, Bill. Could you waffle any more on that one? All right. I dumped my girlfriend and now I regret it. Is this the follow up song to I kissed a girl and I liked it? Um, hi, Bill. I started watching your podcast, watching my podcast. I don't know how you're doing that. You mean listening to my podcast? Oh, this person's not from this country or doesn't speak English. Anyways, I'm going to read this right is the same way this person wrote it. I started watching your podcast since a few months because the best Romanian stand-up comedians always said that they listen to yours in their podcast. Get the fuck out of here. Romanian comics listen to this podcast? Shout out to Romania. Huh? Isn't that where all the gypsies come? The Richard Pryors and George Collins are fucking pickpocketers? I got to tell you, man, they're fucking amazing. They're pains in the asses, but Jesus Christ, can those fucking people pick your pocket? You almost like when they leave and you can't find your passport, you almost fucking applaud them. I don't know where you are, but that was good. I had no idea. God bless you. 
Um, I don't know if they come from Romania, the gypsies. Transylvania, they're gypsies. They move around. Now about the story. Uh, me and this girls, we had a complicated... Dude, you got a threesome? You come, broke up with two girls? Uh, I had a complicated story, and I tried six months to be with her till I finally succeeded. So after one year and a half, a very nice relationship. He was giving it to her. Of course, with ups and downs, before I leave to Germany to study, I decided alone that will be better for her if we split up. So I dumped her and said to her that we should remain friends. My decision was because I got scared of her love. She would leave all of her dreams and stuff only to come with me and be with me and to to hear that at 19 years old is scary. It's scary as shit. Uh, now, after nine months, when the moving out euphoria has vanished, I now know that I made a big mistake and I realized how cunt I was to her. I think you mean cunty. Uh, in the past month, so she moved on, but we still kind of talk, but I cannot sleep anymore. I developed a little problem with drinking alone and trying not to feel something. Uh, a little advice would be nice. Thank you and all good for you and your family. First of all, fucking, you did great with your English. I knew exactly what the fuck you were talking about. I could never do that. Well, I don't even know what you guys, what do you speak over there? Is it, is it called a Romanian? Tapanzi? Um, dude, you're 19. You're going to meet somebody else. I mean, um, on your way to finding the person you're going to you're going to be with you fuck up like anything any success story you make mistakes and you learn from them along the way all right if you really love her i mean this is what you could do call her up one time and just say listen i just want you to know that breaking up with you was the biggest mistake i've ever made i've had a problem sleeping i've been i've developed i've been drinking trying to forget I, and just tell her why you did it and just totally communicate with her and see what see what she says. All right? And, you know, if she doesn't take you back, you can live with that. Okay? The bottom line, dude, you're fucking 19 years old. Okay? Don't start drinking. Don't, do, don't make the mistakes I made. All right? You're in the prime of your fucking life. Turn it around. Wake up every morning. Have some positive thing that you say to yourself. All right? As simple as today's going to be a great day. Or I fucked up that relationship with so-and-so, but I forgive myself. And I'm going to go out that door and I'm going to be a fucking real life. You know, and you're going to attract somebody else to you. Go out there, have a good time. And when you meet a woman, all right, that you like, and just, just fucking be straight up honest. How you doing? Me, I'm trying to be positive. I'm trying to be positive. I went through some shit. I'm trying to get over it. And I'm trying to be positive. What's going on with you? They're cutie pie. Start doing that. Don't fucking start drinking and being a sad sack, you know? Drinking again. Oh, baby, I'm drinking again. All right? That's it. But this is a good, this is going to be a good experience for you. You can learn how to fucking open up as a guy, communicate your feelings, and learn how to fucking get closure with the woman that you broke up with, or who knows, it opens back up. Who knows, right? And then also, you learn how to not make self destruct You learn how to pick yourself up off the fucking mat. Because I'm going to tell you right now, you're 19 years old. If you think this is the first time you're going to get knocked on your ass in life, um, you're, you're sadly mistaken. All right? You got to learn how to get back up again. So this is a great opportunity no matter what. All right? So there you go, grasshopper. Take those positive words and go help yourself a great fucking day.